What's going on, y'all? It's Malcolm Miller. I'm live and direct back in Mississippi. Yes, Clarksdale, Mississippi, to be specific. Visiting uh, all the way from Chicago, Illinois, man. I'm glad to be back. It feels very hospitable and homey. Anybody that know me knows I always say Chicago is uh, I'm Chicago's son and Mississippi's grandchild. Most of my paternal side of the family are originally from Mississippi. Cleveland, Mississippi, you know, Waynesboro, Mississippi. So it's kind of like when, when I came to college at Mississippi Valley State, it was kind of like me bringing everything full circle, connecting uh, Chicago and Mississippi roots and spending my four years down here to get acclimated with where my people are really from. You know what I mean? My father's side of the family. Um, but I'm good. I'm, I'm chilling right now, man. I'm really going to go back in and, and check out this Loyola and Michigan game, Final Four. Is happening NCAA tournament Loyola Chicago yes yeah, 773 we in the building we got a team that's made it to the final four it's great great for the city great for the state of Illinois great for the school and great for college basketball in general let's think about it man we haven't had a Cinderella team make it this far in a minute last time we seen a Cinderella team a mid-major team like this make a final four run was George Mason and that was in 2006. So it's great for the NCAA tournament to see a story like this because a lot of times you got kids that who that really, especially in the city, and Chicago, Chicago is a, is a basketball hotbed. I mean, it's a basketball city. Everybody know you want to get some good hoopers, come to the city. A lot of these kids in Chicago public schools, they get discouraged. They don't get the big offers, the Dukes, the Michigan States, the Michigans, the Kentuckys, the North Carolinas. Or Kansas, when they don't get when they when they don't get those offers, they get discouraged. They feel like all hope is lost. They don't want to go to no mid-major school. They don't want to go to these smaller schools that nobody really knows because they won't get the exposure that they would have gotten at a Duke or a Syracuse or a high-profile high team. And I feel like Loyola Chicago is proving that to be wrong. You got kids from Simeon, kids from Whitney Young, coming in and hooping and showing that look. It doesn't matter where you go. If you got a good team, you got a good group of guys that can get a lot of wins and get the job done, they can make a run. You can be on TV. Kids that would have never got this type of exposure are getting exposure right now, and I feel like it is great for them, great for their program. And hopefully NBA scouts will look at them in the future. Um, I just love this type of story, man. I see it all the time, kids. I don't, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to no uh, Chicago State. I don't want to go to no Eastern Illinois. I don't want to go to no Northern Illinois. Don't nobody know those schools like that. Listen, you can make a difference at these schools. And I'm saying it because there's no individual star player on these teams. It's team basketball. Nobody is averaging 20 points on this team. Did you see with all the big schools, 18, 19, 20 points? Guys are averaging 14, 13, 15. And they pulling it off and they getting it done together, man. That's what I really like about this. Good, really, really, really good feel good story. And it shows kids that no matter who you are, what school you go to, if your team is good, hey, you're going to get noticed. And they made a, a Final Four run, which is just like, it's, it's remarkable, man. They played well in conference play, Missouri Valley Conference. They won out the conference. And I don't really have a tournament, they conference record in front of me, but I know they played very, very well. They've been doing well for a couple of years now. Back to when Milton Doyle from Marshall High School on the west side when he was there hooping. So, it's good to see them get that exposure. A lot of other stuff going on right now, too. I see, um, you know, Fabulous. He get into an incident with his, with his woman. He supposedly had punched her in the face seven times, knocked out her teeth, which is despicable, horrible, horrific. Uh, anybody that know me know I'm against domestic violence all across the board. And Fab, one of my favorite rappers. Like, one of my favorite rappers. I grew up listening to Fab from my cousin, and my brother, my late brother, God rest his soul, um, he's always bump fab. Him and my cousin all the, all the time. And um, I'm going to stick away from the domestic violence thing. Like I said, it's despicable. Uh, we're going to see what happens with that. I'm strictly talking about the hip-hop side of it. Because I'm going to tell you all the truth. I know it's, it's bad to talk about it in lieu of these recent incidents with him. But let's tell the truth about fab, man. Um, because we was having a discussion in this music group that we got on Facebook. And people like... Um, who you take over Jada Kiss, Fab, Lloyd Banks, and somebody else, some Jewels or somebody, I don't know. And everybody's just like, man, Fab is, is easy, it's easy. And I'm gonna tell y'all this right now. Fab got popping 
Like I was pop, I was listening to Fab before it was cool to listen to Fab. Like before he was really like on Instagram with the IG captions and the, and the outfits and the fly fits and all of that and the throwback jerk like the old school movie throwback jerseys like that. Before he was rocking them. Now since the IG Instagram has been around, he's he's um he's ingratiated himself with a, a different core audience core art, audience, especially the women. Which is cool. They think Fab is fly. They think he got great confidence and all that type of stuff, which he does. He get fly. But I'm going to be real with y'all. In the last couple of years, Fab been making some lackluster music, in my opinion, compared to the stuff that he's usually made. He got a lot of IG caption songs. Like stuff he just rapped to get an IG. He rapped lyrics that he feel like people would put under the IG captions. And to me, that's corny. I like Fab when he was really, really like rapping, gritty grimy and he had the radio hits back then he always been able to make the radio hits or whatever always been able to make the radio hits all the time but i feel like he got away from that when instagram and stuff came around and started to get a little corny now one thing i don't appreciate like not appreciate but one thing i really didn't feel was that fab didn't evolve um he evolved he he tried to keep up with the times and the trends but the rap topics became a little too like immature for his age for me. Like I feel like Fab was too old to be rapping about Snapchat, Snapchat groupies and IG thoughts and all that type of stuff when you dang near 40 years old. He's 40 now, but I mean a couple of years ago he was 38, 37, still rapping about Instagram thoughts and all of that. And it's like, man, a lot of young boy stuff. He was engaging in a lot of young boy activity that I really didn't connect with. I mean, I, you know you can connect with it as a young dude, but when I'm listening to old head, older dudes, I'm listening for, like, some stuff to, like, some jams to be dropped a little bit, too. Like, like when I listen... Well, Jigga really the only one that really did that out of all the old older rappers. The only one that really, like, evolved and grew. Maybe because he was married and all these type of things, but Jigga talk on some different stuff, too. Like, I, Fab was too on the IG, snack, uh, IG thoughts and all that type of stuff, and it was like, all right, all right, man, I'm trying to hear some different content from Fab. You 40 trying to come with something different, something a little bit more introspective, a little more give us a little bit more insight on who the man Fab Fabulous, aka John Jackson, who, who he really is as a person. Them early street dream tapes and all of that, that was that tough stuff. He was talking that talk back then, but I don't know, man. He kind of grew up.